Hi guys, welcome to Rusty Audio again. Um, it's been a long time since I made a video now. Uh, probably two or three weeks, maybe more. Um, not my intention. I wanted to make videos uh, more often than this, but I'm sitting in my car again. <laughs> I'm at the storage unit that I bought at an auction. I do that a few days a week, a month, I mean. Um, had some vintage audio equipment in there, that's why I bid on it, and it also had some new pro audio equipment in boxes in there. So I, I bought the unit for $350, including tax. So I'm here now to pick up some vintage audio that I can clean up and put on eBay. Um, well, I'm making this video as an update on what's going on in uh, Rossi Audio and Bad Dog Speakers and everything else in my Vintage Audio world. Um, just want to make sure that you guys are still on, on tap with everything that is happening. The last three months, well this, let me put it like this, this summer has been kind of crazy and uh, you know from many years of experience of running my own businesses um, I know that things that you plan doesn't always go the way you want it to and um, doesn't always happen in the t time frame that you kind of want or what people ex expect so I guess that a lot of you guys out there has been have been expecting that some of the bad dog speaker models would be um, revealed already well I said in the very, very beginning, five, six, seven months ago, when I, when I launched this idea and this, this crazy project, that release date was 2018 slash 2019, because I, I did that on purpose to buy myself some time. And boy, am I glad that I did that, because like I said, the last three months this summer has been crazy chaotic. And, um, you guys know about the move that I had to make and all kinds of stuff and you know for the last two years I've, I've have had this unknown illness that no one can seem to find out what what is and I'm still not cured or healed in any way I have a few good days uh, out of a month and I have bad days that are bad and then I have bad days that are just plain down, dirty, shitty, I barely get out of bed. So, when I released the idea and I created the group and, and all this stuff, I, I put a time frame that I knew that I maybe could work with. But I have to say though, even though I haven't revealed a model yet, picture-wise, uh, I am way ahead of schedule. Um, I am looking at doing a photo shoot of at least four models uh, within a month or two. Um, probably a little bit sooner for a, a couple of models. But all four models that I have built prototypes for, and listen to this guys, I have prototypes built ready already. Um, it's just that I'm in the process right now uh, of finishing up a few jobs that I have taken on, like recon jobs and stuff like that. And you know, I've been promising people that yeah, I'll, I'll have it done and all that stuff. But um, I'm sorry about the wobbly thing. I'm I'm using like a handy stick or a selfie stick or whatever they call it. Um, but you know, I wake up in the morning and I have one of those bad days or I have one of those shitty days, and I basically can't do anything um, because here's what's going on. Um, I'm finishing up a few jobs right now. I have five jobs that I'm gonna finish up. And I just have to say, I, I can't take on any more jobs uh, right now for the next, for the rest of the year. Uh, if I'm gonna get done with the bad dog speakers and everything else that I want to do, uh, I'm gonna finish up the jobs that I'm doing now and I can't take on any more jobs, recons, refunds, whatever. Um, when it comes to bad dog speakers, I like I said, I have four prototypes built. One is a, the puppy, the bookshelf speaker, and uh, the other model is a single 15, and the other, the third model is a dual 15 subwoofer. Both of these subwoofers, both the dual and the single 15s, are passive. I don't build active subwoofers because 
one, there is not a plate amp out there in a reasonable price that is good enough. Okay? Um, I have talked to a company, and I, I can use their plate amp, and that it's awesome. It's a thousand watts. I can use that, but it's going to cost a good um, chunk of money. And that will drive the price up on the uh, active subwoofer if I go active. But I have decided to make these subwoofers passive and let people use power amps instead. I also have a tower that is ready. Uh, it has a tweeter on the top, two mid ranges, four, four and a half inch big, and a 15 inch side firing woofer. And um, here's how I'm going to do it I'm going to build a catalog, and each model can come with different drivers. Uh, why am I doing that? Well, one, I can offer different model, uh, di the same model with different drivers for different prices. So if you want the best option, you can pay uh, whatever that price is. Or if you want a cheaper option, I will I'll offer that with a cheaper, cheaper drivers. Uh, and you pay less. Um, I have been asked, um, what about pricing? Well, the pricing that I gave earlier, or in the very, very beginning, was just preliminary. And was subject to change and it will change some some of them will maybe go down some of them will go up um, because building custom speakers is not just slapping together some wood and put some drivers in there and hope for the best that's not how I build them and it takes time and it takes labor and it takes it takes a lot of things that cost money so I will what I will do is I will do a photo shoot um, Within, 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 within weeks, I can put it like that. I'm not going to say how many weeks, but within weeks, there will be a photo shoot of the models. And it will go into a catalog, and I will reveal the catalog and the photo shoot. And what I will do next after that is I will put them in my music room for a demonstration and play some music and make videos and post that. That will happen soon. But... I am in the process of redoing my music room, so I can't do anything before that is done. And this is all had to do with Bad Dog speakers because my music room was set up for 7 Mega Hi-Fi and, and the models that I had there. There's still going to be some of them in there, but the demo wall or whatever you call it is being built and I'm, going, I have to, I'm making room for these Bad Dog speaker models to go in there so I can show them off so it it is a work in progress and it, it goes forward faster than I expected um, I didn't expect to have them prototypes done until maybe January February March next year of 2018 but we are now in July uh, 2017 and I'm I have four models built so um, What kind of drivers are these prototypes going to have? Well, in the prototypes that I'm building, I'm going to build them with some Surin Vega models, both new and, and older. Uh, they will be offered with either Surin Vega uh, drivers, Eminence drivers, uh, Dayton audio drivers, BNC drivers. There's a full range of driver manufacturers that I have talked to, PRV, stuff like that. So, one model in the catalog can have six different versions depending on the drivers that are put in there and what, what the customer wants. So it's all up to the customer to decide the price range of the speaker and the quality of the speaker. The cabinet quality will be the same on all. But of course, some of these drivers are better than the others. And um, it is coming along pretty darn good, I think. Um, shipping. Um, that's something that I've been thinking about for a long, long time. Because <laughs> I'm building these speakers to stand out from the crowd, okay? I'm not building some something that you see on the market. 
there is so many speaker manufacturers on the market today and they all look the same with just different drivers and they're boring and I'm building something different so a lot of my speakers can't just be put in a box and shipped with FedEx or the, the Postal Service or whatever some of these speakers or most of these speakers only one model I think can be shipped with the UPS or FedEx um, most of my speakers will have to go with cargo for, and, and freight and it's going to cost depending on where you live it's going to cost a good chunk of money so so just be aware of that and they have to be put on pallets okay because these are huge they're huge so let me just give you an example <clears throat> hold on my throat is dry The dual 15 inch without the drivers weighs something around 150, 160 pounds. Okay? It's huge. It's a monster. It's a monster of a subwoofer. And when I put the drivers in there, I'm not putting some wimpy, shitty drivers in there. Uh, each driver weighs at least 25, 30, maybe 40 pounds. And. Um, so you're looking at a, a dual 15 inch that is way over 200 pounds and huge it is huge so it has to go on pallet and it has to go freight so just be aware of that and most of my speakers are that way you're not going to get some wimpy cabinets with uh, 19 millimeter or uh, half an inch uh, thickness um, we're talking about an inch or more in most models um, so I have to find a good solution I have talked to a couple of freight forward, for, forwarders and companies to maybe get a deal with them um, I come quite a bit uh, ahead with Roadrunner they are willing to to give me some good pricing on it so I'm looking into that so just be aware that custom building speakers is more than just building the speakers there's a lot of logistics behind this whole shit and um, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of setting everything up and there's a lot of boring work uh, that goes into this like I said you don't just slap together some wood and hope for the best you design some speakers you, you you test them so of course the prototypes that I'm building now is, is going into the test mode and from there if I'm not satisfied with the sound okay then I have to do some changes to the prototype and, and of course that's gonna take some time too so but I'm pretty confident that the prototypes that I have built are so good that they will blow everyone else away in the same price category uh, I doubt you will find subwoofers for home use that you can use, dual 15, that plays like mine do. And the, the single 15 will blow out any 15 inch home subwoofer that you can buy. So keep that in mind. Well, I'm going to dive into this unit and um, get some uh, vintage audio out of here. And there is a big console radio in here too. I'm gonna to take a picture of that and I'm gonna leave it in there for now. I, I rented this unit for a month just to give me some time because every other place that I have, and I can't take this into my business place because I don't have room for this crap in my business room. Um, so I have I rented this for a month. Hopefully I can just sell it out of here and, and get go on. But yeah, in here there is there was some vintage audio, uh, Fisher, uh, and some some cheap sound design shit. Um, the console radio. There was some home theater speakers in here, and Yamaha mixing tables, brand new in boxes. I mean, it's killer. I'll I'll post a picture of it on Rossi Audio uh, Facebook group. Um, crazy stuff probably ten thousand dollar value or more on all, everything in there and um, I got it for three hundred and fifty five dollars pretty darn good deal so if you're wondering what I do this is what I've been doing for a living for many many years beside my audio business um, 
I love doing this crap here. Uh, so four or five days a month, I go out and do auctions like this. And um, I, I tell you, I've been buying a lot of units with a lot of equipment. One of my better units ever was I bought online, in fact. It's, I bought it in Oklahoma City. It was an eight hour drive back and forth each way. I bought a 10 by 30, 10 by 30 meaning 10, by, uh, 10 feet wide and 30 feet deep. Had high ceilings, so it was 15 feet ceiling height. And that unit used to belong to a former engineer and former employee of Altec Lansing back in the 60s and 70s. And there was tons of Altec, tons of Electro Boys, tons of Duquesne vintage audio. It was full of vintage audio equipment. And I've been selling stuff out of that unit. And, I'm, and I got that unit like four, three or four years ago. And I still have stuff left over from it that I'm selling. And I got another unit down in Atlanta, uh, Georgia, and six six and a half hour drive each way. And I bought a unit down there that was 10 by 20, and it was full of uh, sound equipment because it belonged to a guy who used to own a sound studio. So I got some sir. That's where I got my Sir and Vega L36 PEs from. Um, everything in there was in mint condition and very very good. I got reel to reel tapes, task cams. You name it, I got two of those. I got a piano, and I've been selling stuff out of there too for a long, long time. And now this one, and I probably bought about 20 units that is full of vintage or new audio equipment. And over the years, for 10 years, I've been buying these storage units. I've probably been buying thousands of units and gotten a lot of different stuff. But I normally just seek out the ones that has audio equipment in them. So I'm gonna dive in here now and get this done today. Um, and I'll, I'll keep you guys updated on the Bad Dog speakers later on. Uh, just keep in mind that the videos from my room is coming up a little bit later. It's going to take me a couple of weeks to get that room in order again. Um, like I said, I'm redoing it. I'm reorganizing it. I'm building a brand new demo rack for amplifiers and stuff like that. So keep an eye and I'll be updating more videos later. Until then, shiba.